boys and girls. We are Three Angels for Kids, and this is episode eight of 13 action-packed programs about the Three Angels messages. And we have a very special episode today. You're going to learn a new song, and you will participate in a beautiful Sabbath experience with us. So I hope you are ready. I hope you have your Bibles, your paper, your pencils, and your crayons, because it is time to get started. I'm Dr. Sandy. I'm Miss Yvette. I'm Nathan. I'm Tania. I'm Adelaide. And I'm Kylie. And we're Three Angels for Kids! Let's start with prayer today. Dear Jesus, we are so thankful that you are our Creator, God, and Savior. Lord, I pray that you will be with us as we continue to learn more about the Sabbath and how we worship you and honor the creation that you have given us. We thank you, dear Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. It is time for our theme song. Are you ready to sing? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Boys and girls, let's show the boys and girls at home the pictures you made of the dolphins. And let me ask, what does a picture of a dolphin have to do with the first angel's message? Anybody have an idea with that? What does a picture of a dolphin? Yes, Abby. Um, he is the creator and this is one of his creations. And the dolphins are always on a mission. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, I like that a lot. Do you think you can say the first angel's message? Yes. The whole thing? Okay. Ready? Go. Fear God and give Him glory for the hour of His judgment has come. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, we're going to find out that the first angel's message ties into another text in the Bible. So let's have them turn to that. That's right. I'd like everyone take your Bibles and turn to Exodus. Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 through 10. Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 through 10. And today, I would like Nathan to read that for us. Could you do that for us, Nathan? Yes. Thank you. Remember to keep the Sabbath as a holy day. You may work and get everything done during six days each week. Hmm. But the seventh day is a day of rest to honor the Lord your God. On that day, no one may do any work, not you, your son or daughter, or your men or women slaves, neither your animals nor the foreigners living in your cities may work. Hmm. Did you notice that there's a connection between the first angel's message and the Sabbath commandment? Did you notice that? You noticed it, Kylie? What did you notice? That it talks about the creation at the end of the first angel and it talks about it in the commandment. Yes. It, it's in creation. I the mean. same wording. So that's how we know that the first angel is calling us back to worship God on the rightful Sabbath day, the seventh day, because it's the same language. That's right. Good catch. Good catch. Well, you know, sometimes we've been talking about going outside and enjoying nature on the Sabbath, but what if it's raining? So I thought maybe we could talk a little bit about something else that I like to do on the Sabbath if it's raining, and that is to make some pictures of God's beautiful creation. So I want to talk to you a little bit about watercolors, and I'll show you some of my watercolors. I've been practicing a lot and, and watching videos and everything, so I have some watercolors here, and I think they're going to show them on the screen for the boys and girls. But I wanted to tell you about some different techniques. This is one of mine. But if you look really closely on there, some of that I made with salt. If you put salt on watercolor, you can get a special effect. Mm. So I just wanted to talk to you some of that. And then here's one of an owl. And you can um, 
use a sponge. You can use a sponge as a watercolor effect. And then here's one with some trees. And another thing I wanted to tell you is that you can use um, like a cut up credit card actually to make lines. So I'm gonna very quickly show you some tools that I use when I do watercolor. And I'm gonna pass around some palettes and let's get these out of the way. And usually when kids do watercolor, let me just show you something here, I'll show you some tools. And Miss Yvette, if you can pass those palettes, and be careful because you have some paint in there. And everyone will get one of these also. You can pass them to your side. So I'm going to pass out a cup of water and a piece of watercolor paper to you. Now this is going to be a little different yeah. than the way you yeah. normally yeah. paint. Yeah. And I thought you might like to see a little bit how a little more professional. So usually when you guys do watercolor, is this what you use? Yes. Yes. So we have a tube of watercolor paint and you'll see that we have a little bit of blue in your tray. Now, when a watercolor person, may I use some of your water as well here, Tania? When a watercolorist paints, what we do is we put our brush in the water, so you can do that, put your brush in the water, and the whole idea of watercolor, you know how you make something lighter? You just add more water, so you're going to take water and put it in the middle, the big fat middle place right here on your palette. Now this is called a palette, okay? So we have the palette, we're adding some water, and then you take a little bit of water a little bit of paint and put the paint in the middle of your palette and you're going to notice that the more water you add to the middle, the lighter it becomes. So what I want you to do is, this is nice watercolor paper, nice thick paper. You'll see this is a little different maybe than the kind you use. And I want you to practice on your paper and see if you can take sometimes put more water and sometimes put more paint and see if you can make it dark, partly dark, and then add water and pull some of that paint so then it starts to get lighter. And that's how you do watercolor. See how it starts out dark and you add a lot of paint. You see, you add paint and then pull, get some more water, Tania, now add some water to it and that's how we do it. Take a look, take a look, Addie at my paper. You see how it gets lighter? So I thought you guys would like to practice that and I'm going to tell you a little bit about some different watercolor tools and techniques you can use. So sometime on a Sabbath afternoon you can make some beautiful pictures and you can kind of play with watercolor. Now let me show you some more of my tools. You see this sponge? Remember I said I live next to the sponge capital of the world? Well, yeah. what you can do is take a sponge and put it in the watercolor and sponge on here. That gives a different effect. Or you can take a straw and, and you can put some water and then blow and it'll make a pattern. Mm. Or you could even cut up a credit card and pull that through the paint and it will make a line. Or you can take a stick and you can make some patterns in the paint with a stick. You can make it look more like a tree. So, and I wanted to show you another technique that I think you might enjoy too. Just take some water, put it down, wet the paper first a little bit, and then put your paint on it. But it looks like we're running out of time but you'll see that that makes the paint spread all around. So mm -hmm. have fun with that, practice, and on the Sabbath, remember that God is your creator. And we're gonna talk a little bit now about opening and closing the Sabbath. Let's take a look at our video now. What do we mean by opening and closing the Sabbath? The Bible tells us that the Sabbath goes from sundown on a Friday night to sundown on a Saturday night. So how do we open the Sabbath? On Friday evening, it's good to do something we look forward to. Some people like to have a special meal and light candles. That wonderful glow of opening the Sabbath is kind of like having Christmas once a week. There's something so nice about lighting a candle to bring in the Sabbath and focus our minds on Jesus. You know, it's good to pray together as a family, get together with friends, sing together, read the Bible together. 
And Friday night is also a good time to maybe plan what you'd like to do the next day on the Sabbath in the afternoon. It's just a time to thank God for the blessings of the week and to invite him to be very close to us on the Sabbath hours. And once we've opened the Sabbath, we have a whole day to enjoy God's blessings. Then, on Sabbath evening, just around sunset, it's time to close the Sabbath. I'd like to invite you now to come with me on a Sabbath evening in Florida as my husband and I visit a spot near our home to close the Sabbath. Meet my friend, the great blue heron. He likes to come out late in the afternoon here in the little Greek fishing village of Tarpon Springs, Florida. I especially like to visit him in his habitat here in the Gulf as the sun is slowly going down on a Sabbath evening. The Sabbath is a time to stop what we're doing, forget about all our problems and worries, and just soak in the goodness of God's world. On Sabbath evening, right before the sun goes down, find a quiet spot to enjoy the last few moments of God's special day before another busy week begins. Then say a prayer and thank God for all he has given you. Then ask him to bless you in the coming week and keep you close to him. Never forget to keep the seventh day holy. The Sabbath is an island in time that keeps us centered in Jesus. Praise God for the Sabbath. All right, we're looking forward to continuing our Sabbath celebration. But first, there's some other things I would like to review about the Sabbath. If you could please take your journals, take your journals, and we're going to cover the five points for opening and closing the Sabbath. All right, remember you're writing on the left-hand side. And at the top of the page, I want you to write, open and close Sabbath. Open and close Sabbath. That's at the top of the page. All right. And now we're going to start with number one. Number one is sunset to sunset. Because Sabbath starts sunset Friday night and it ends sunset Saturday night. Sunset to sunset. Excellent. Number two starts Friday night. <laughs> That's a reminder for us. It starts Friday night. And then you might wonder, hmm, how long does the Sabbath continue? How long is the Sabbath? Number three, if it's from sunset Friday night to sunset Saturday night, that's 24 hours. So I want you to write 24 hours for number three. Number four, when does it close? Closes Saturday night. I know this is some repetition, but you know, that helps us to remember. That's right. Repetition That's right. helps us to remember. Closes Saturday night. That's number four. And then, of course, you know, we're learning about the three what? Angels. angels. So this is something the first angel tells us. So write first angel for number five. Great job. Great job, boys and girls. Excellent. I hope you boys and girls at home were able to get that information also. I, All right. I'm not sure we have time for our quiz. We oh, have to we do might not drawing. have. Oh, oh, <laughs> okay. So let's, let's draw our great blue heron now. You saw the great blue heron that lives near my house. And I'm giving you a clue. It's starting out with an ellipse. So as soon as it turns on, you need to have your heron's head drawn. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. And boys and girls at home, don't get frustrated. You can practice these at home as well. You can always um, find out how to get there by going to our website. And you can practice at home over and over as many times as you, as you wish. So, yeah, it's a little tricky there, but we made the head with the ellipse. The beak is a triangle. And now we're making this kind of a curvy line and then back down to get the body. I don't know if any of you have ever seen a great blue heron, but yeah. have you? Tania, yeah. you have? Yeah. Yeah. I've seen a great blue heron in Mexico. Oh, in Mexico. Okay. 
And you notice when you draw, it's just basic shapes. See, the, the tail starts just as another ellipse. Once you have that oval shape down, there's so much you can make because then you can go back in and erase the parts that overlap. So I think you'll get it. And as you draw, again, we want you to remember that God is an amazing creator. The first angel tells us to worship God because he is the creator of everything. The heavens, the earth, the seas, and the springs of water. And those same words, those same exact words are in the fourth commandment. Worship God who created the heavens, the earth, the seas, and the springs of water. The same exact words. So God is trying to tell us something. Here's the first angel's message. Here's the fourth commandment. They match. That's very, very important to look at those words and how they match because that is telling us that the first angel is calling us back to worship God on his rightful day of worship, the seventh day Sabbath. And once you see that, it's so clear, so, so clear because it's the exact same words. So I want you to think about that. You're drawing your great blue. You're remembering how amazing God is. You're remembering about opening and closing the Sabbath. And you're remembering that the first angel's message matches the Sabbath commandment, okay? So you're making the legs now and you notice the great blue even has a knee like you do. <laughs> he has a joint, so you have a little bulge in the middle there. Because if he didn't, it'd be a little tricky to walk. Like he's on stilts. It's kind of like he is on stilts anyway. <laughs> you know, but you have to, God designed everything in, in such an amazing way. There's, there's a phrase called economy of design. That means a lot of his creatures have similar, hey, this is going to rhyme. A lot of his creatures have similar features. <laughs> But that's called economy of design. So you have your basic shape and you see there's some erasing you're having to do there. Wow, Tania, nice, nice. And let's see how Nathan's doing over here. Thank good, you. good. Thank okay, you. you're getting ready to, oh, you need some crayons. I'm sorry. We keep forgetting to pass those out. These kids are so patient on our set, aren't mm -hmm. they? So here are your crayons. And again, don't get frustrated if you're not keeping up. You can always practice later. And our boys and girls here, they don't always finish. They do the best they can. Uh, and again, you can use markers, you can use colored pencils, you can use crayons, whatever you like, but you're going to try to give this a little bit of a three-dimensional look, all right? And you know, you remember how you give it a three-dimensional look? Some parts are darker and some parts are lighter. So now we're drawing in a few of the little feathers on the bottom here. So go ahead and draw in some feathers, bigger part on the wing, because the feathers aren't always the same size. Now we're coloring in. It's called the great blue, so it's, it's mm -hmm. kind of a light gray and it has some blue markings to it. Coloring in the legs now. That's an important thing with birds too. You can tell the kind of bird by the color of their legs. There are some birds that are similar, but they might have, one has an orange leg, legs and one has yellow legs. And also the males and females are sometimes very different with the birds. I was trying to learn different kinds of birds and there's so much to learn and I was so happy I thought I was learning it. Mm -hmm. And then I found out, oh, the males and females look totally different <laughs> in some of the birds. And then I found out that the young look different than the mature birds. That's right. So I thought, oh, I thought I knew what, you know, some of these beach, I, I was going to the beach with a, a bird book. Mm -hmm. And I said, wait a minute, I can't find, you know, this particular bird. And then I found out that it um, was different when it was young. Okay, that's it for the drawing today. You have a special announcement. I'm so excited. Yes, yes. Yay. we've talked a lot about God, our creator, and how we honor him by opening and closing the Sabbath. We're going to continue the celebration we started yesterday. Yes. So, yes. So I'm going to go set up the classroom and I'll be right back. Boys and girls, we've been talking about the Sabbath and how special it is that God gave us the Sabbath at the end of creation. Before we start our Sabbath celebration, I'm going to ask Addie, would you pray for us, Addie? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Dear Father, thank you that we get to be here for the Sabbath celebration. 
Thank you that all of us are here and ready today to make you happy. And um, we love you. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Eddie. We're happy, I like that. Because the Sabbath is a very special day. And that's why we call this a Sabbath celebration. When we learned about the Sabbath, remember we talked about it was like the culmination or the end of God's creation week, correct? So before we actually get into reviewing the Sabbath, let's go over God's creation, all right? Now, here we have our candles. And the first candle represents God in the center and the first day of creation. What did God create on the first day? He light. created the light. 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 light, that's correct. God created light. Then on the second day, what did God create? He created the um, atmosphere, the clouds, the air. Correct, the air, the atmosphere, clouds, our sky, beautiful. All right, what did God create on the third day? He created dry land with vegetation, trees, and all kinds of plants. Beautiful. All kinds of plants and trees and flowers. And when we look around, we see such a variety of flowers. So we had lots of color on the earth too, didn't we? Right. All right. On the fourth day, what did God create on the fourth day? <laughs> fourth day, what did the God... The sun, moon, and stars. The sun, moon, and stars. And so we're still, it's pretty quiet on the earth, right? All right, so now the fifth day of creation, <laughs> Kylie. It's the creatures and the birds that fly. The birds, and now we have some sound. Oh, I can just imagine dolphins jumping up <laughs> and the birds singing and flying. And then on the sixth day, what did God create on the sixth day? He created the creatures that move on the ground, and then he created Adam and Eve. Correct. So now we have all kinds of animals on our earth. Lots of noises and sounds. Beautiful. And Adam and Eve. Now you notice we have two candles left. And we have one day left. The seventh day. What did God do on the seventh day? Tania, can you tell me what did God do on the seventh day? He rested. He rested on the seventh day. And then something else happened on the seventh day. What did God do? He blessed it. He blessed it and made that day holy. So that's why we have two candles for the seventh day. God rested and he blessed that particular day. And that's why we celebrate it. It's a very special day. Now, families celebrate the Sabbath in so many different ways. I'd like for you to share with us and share with our boys and girls what your family, something that your family does to make their Sabbath special. All right. So what I do with my family is that we all get together during the Sabbath. We sing our favorite hymns, hmm. we praise God, and then we pray. Beautiful, Nathan. I love that. I love to sing too. Our family sing. Yes, Tania. Sometimes we go out in nature, and one time we hiked at Providence Canyon. Okay, so you go out in nature and you see the things that God has created. Beautiful. Yes, Addie. Um, uh, we like to invite people to our house and when people invite us to their house and we have uh, meals together with our friends and then oh, we wonderful. play together with Bible games and play outside in Jesus' nature. Wonderful, wonderful. So you're playing games and enjoying friends. That's beautiful, that's beautiful. Yes. Well, what our family likes to do, we like to go to Miss Teeny's, Pastor Finley's retreat center All and right. ding on their bell. And we like to play Go Ye with them. It's like to tell everybody the good news and then the end comes. <laughs> All right, so Go Ye is a, a, a Bible game. It yes. talks about spreading God's message. Ooh. Beautiful. I don't know. Dr. Sandy, would you like to share something that your family does on the Sabbath? Oh, wow. Well, I've been married to a pastor for 41 <laughs> years. So I go to church and then I go to church and then we go to church some more. <laughs> Sometimes we have more than one church, but uh, it is a nice time to fellowship with fellow believers that yes. believe the same way and that hold up your faith, you know? Yes. What about you? 
You know, one of the things I want to mention, because we learned that Sabbath starts when? Friday night, right? Mm -hmm, right? So I would like to mention something that we might do to even open the Sabbath or a special meal. Mm. Sometimes people eat the same thing every Friday because that's a special day. Oh. So our family, um, we would have Mexican food mm. on <laughs> Friday. So as my daughter was growing up and everything, that was what we had every that Friday. Makes me hungry. Because yes, because her grandmother, my mother in law, is from Mexico. Yes, so we would have Mexican food on Friday. All right, wonderful. So now let's quickly, we're going to talk about why this, what we're going to do to make this extra special today. You will notice that you have some juice and you have a muffin. Do you know why? Because the Sabbath is the sweetest day of the week. So this represents the sweetness of the Sabbath. All right, so before we enjoy that, we're going to sing our song. We're going to sing a song about Sabbath. Are you ready? Yes. Well, Jesus, I would just like to say we are so thankful. Let's bow our heads. Jesus, we're so thankful for the Sabbath day that you have given us. Thank you for each one of these children, their parents who are raising them to know who you are and why we celebrate your special day. Please keep us and bless us as we enjoy the sweetness of the Sabbath. In your name I pray, amen. All right, boys and girls, enjoy the sweetness of the Sabbath. All right? Mmm, oh. that it apple juice nice. is good. Yes. Mm. And remember, we have a muffin. Remember how that represented that Jesus is the bread of life? Right. Remember we talked about that earlier? So enjoy your muffin also. Boys and girls, we've come to the end of our episode. Hasn't this been wonderful? Yes. Going yes. over God's creation and reviewing the Sabbath and seeing how special it is. Boys and girls at home, next week, next Friday, you and your family may decide on something special you can do to recognize God's creation and to bring in or open the Sabbath. Well, We've come to the end of our episode. Are we ready to say goodbye to everyone? All right. Bye. 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 We'll see you next time.